Okay, so hi everyone. Thanks for uh, attending today's webinar and thank you very much uh, for waiting. Um, I am Georgia, Jackson International Sales Manager. I am excited to introduce uh, Tiziana, our Senior Engineer and Technical Manager, Support and Training Responsible, and uh, to our Technical Manager, and uh, both Tiziana and Tu, today will present uh, what's new in the new Reconstructor 4.2 release. Um, Jaxel continues to improve Reconstructor with the 4.2 release that makes um, output creation faster and uh, new toolbar menu organization and new import and export format make uh, things uh, look better and easier. So today we will experience uh, all these uh, new things. Before we begin, just uh, general information uh, on uh, how you could uh, join uh, um, the webinar. Your mice uh, is closed, so you cannot uh, talk to us, but uh, you can of course interact with us. If you have questions, please submit them in the chat box. We try to follow up uh, uh, in real time. Uh, the webinar will be recorded for your reference and you will receive it by email. So don't worry if you uh, are scared to have lost something. We will leave some time at the end for Q&I questions. In case uh, we might not be able to reply to all your questions, don't worry because uh, we will uh, follow up uh, afterwards. So, um, let me quickly go through the today's agenda, please. Uh, we will have a short introduction and then uh, we will enter inside presenting the new Reconstructor 4.2, underlining also some workflow demonstration and we have isolated uh, three main workflow that we would like to investigate with you today that are building, tunneling and mining one. Then uh, some general information about Reconstructor 4.2, new licensing and trial. And uh, there is a special gift for you, so don't miss it. Don't miss it. And then we will leave the time for uh, Q&A. So let's start. Reconstructor, one software and uh, mul multiple application. Um, Reconstructor can take you from uh, 3D data to deliverables. The Reconstructor core software, we can say a sort of uh, Reconstructor base, is customizable by adding special set of commands to satisfy special industry demands. So there's uh, this core software that is Reconstructor and uh, depending uh, on your need, uh, you can add uh, some specific add-on that contain specific toolbar features depending on the industry field where you are mostly working. For example, mining, color, and then the much more specific one that is the Aeron add-on mostly used by the Aeron user. Aeron is the Jaxel wearable port portable mobile mapping system. Reconstructor is an all-in-one deliverable solution, so for all the people who have never heard about it or who have never seen and used it, this is a quick view about the applications in which the software can be used. Um, Reconstructor is a software dedicated to point cloud processing and uh, it can be used in most uh, all the survey applications and uh, it goes uh, from construction to architectural, from mining to forensic, uh, cultural heritage, uh, forestry, uh, plant industry, asset management, uh, investigation and so on. So um, we have here a global view of the software and uh, now uh, how we can proceed working in Reconstructor. Um, Reconstructor is a complete set of tools to process point cloud and meshes. And Reconstructor can increase productivity and makes working on your 3D data more enjoyable. The project structure is very easy to investigate 
and the user can access to all the items directly and immediately. This, the image that you can see here on the screen is uh, a general reconstructor project structure. So when a reconstructor project is created, normally you have only one file that is uh, this uh, rec project that is a XML file. Then during the data processing and elaboration, folders are created depending on what you are importing. For example, when you import a point cloud, automatically the software creates these grids. When you start, for example, to create mesh, or when you import mesh, the software creates this folder that contains all the mesh. So there's a very open and clear software structure. Then, while um, you are working uh, inside the software and you have a lot of items that you have imported or created, and uh, if you want to know where an object has been saved, just uh, select an object. For example, um, here I have select uh, a point cloud and press uh, right mouse button and open containing folder and the object will be underlined. So this um, clever structure boots, user confidence, and easy of use. Reconstructor has the ability to import data coming from different types of source, and uh, so you can uh, import data coming from TLS, uh, UAV, uh, mobile mapping system, handheld, uh, portable mobile mapping system. And uh, Jexel has an international partnership with most of the common hardware houses, uh, and this enables to manage mostly of the incoming raw data. So how does it work, the process in Reconstructor? Point cloud apart, you can import a 3D mesh, and uh, other different kind typology of data, like for example, digital images, spherical images, uh, and topographic points. When you have your data need, usually you can proceed with uh, automatic point cloud filtering, and uh, the registration process follows up. All your different data can be registered together. It does not matter if you have point cloud and meshes because the software can register together both point cloud and meshes. One of the most appreciated tools is the automatic targetless registration that sensibly reduces the registration processing time providing registration reports. Then a complete set of tools supports you to clean and edit the point cloud. After this general process, you have um, a lot of possibility of results that you can compute. For example, there's um, a dedicated workflow for tunneling application that include cross-section creating creation along an axis, volume computation, and 3D model inspection. Some specific tools can be used to extract the profiles, contours, cross-section, whose results are clever organized in group that includes sections like DXF, orthophotos, and slice of points. To create realistic 3D model, it is possible to apply high resolution pictures, any kind, also panorama images are supported. You can also do some volume computations, whatever it is for a stockpile, tunnel, open pit as well as calculating area. Orthophoto and uh, X-ray orthophoto can be extracted directly and then they can uh, be imported in CAD thanks uh, to the script file created in the software by which you can drag it inside uh, your CAD environment and automatically import the data. And monitoring is one of the applications where you can do as built as design inspection to see if everything has been built according to project, uh, adding also the height spot map. So Reconstructor is a good platform to manage and combining point cloud and exports result as deliverables that can be PDF report, DXF polyline images, and the data than self.
So, what you can export from Reconstructor? Um, Reconstructor, we can say that has a certain, has a little something new for everyone, and the, the deliverable can be 2D, like for example, DXF Polyline for CAD environment, orthophotos, X-ray orthophotos and blueprint, planarity maps, and the change detection maps. Then you can export the 3D data, point cloud, meshes, and 3D polylines. And you can export as well report mostly in PDF format. Jexel provides two free viewer, a reconstructor 3D viewer to share and navigate your 3D reconstructor project, and then the Go, the Go Blueprint that allows to share and investigate your 2D images, orthophotos, X-ray orthophoto, and Blueprint. The Go Blueprint can be installed both on Workstation and on Microsoft Tablet so that the user can navigate, measure, and investigate the 2D views also on site. This is the Go Blueprint Navigator, and you can take measures, linear and angular, as we are doing here, and as well, you can measure areas and volume. Um, by the setting, you can change dimension style, uh, background color, uh, the style also of the general annotation, uh, the unit measures, and so on. So that's a very clever way to deliver your 2D data and uh, to investigate and navigate uh, all uh, <clears throat> your data. So. What's new in uh, Reconstructor 4.2? I would like now to pass the floor to Tu, who, with whom we will experience the new Reconstructor 4.2 release. So let me quickly... Okay, I'm just now passing the control to Tu. So in a few seconds, Okay, good morning. Here's two. I'm Major Shelton okay. Manager. And thank you very, very much for joining with us in uh, the webinar today. I'm responsible for the technical part to show you what are the new features and uh, what are the new tools in uh, some workflows. First of all, uh, let's start with the new user interface of Reconstructor. So now I will Open the software. Okay, here we are. Okay, sorry. I first I will deactivate these new add-ons. So you will see here. This is the basic installation of Reconstructor software, the 4.2 release. You can see here with the. the with the basics installation, we will have the lineup, toolbox, mesh toolbox, measures, and cat output. Uh, sorry, sorry to sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. uh, we cannot see your screen. Okay, now there's the desktop and uh, a window of color map. Okay, now here we are. Thanks a lot. Okay, okay. sorry now that's good. for the problem of uh, internet connection. So hope it will be all right. So. Okay, let me come back to the start, the starting point. So uh, I will start introducing you the new interface of Reconstructor and I will open the software and here is the user interface, the basic installation of Reconstructor. And you can see here with the basic installation, we will have lineup toolbox mesh toolbox and measures and get output and now i will activate the other add-ons which is the which are mining add-on color 
and uh, heroin add-on as Georgia has been introduced to you before. And for those of you who have been familiar with Reconstructor, you may find that the software changed a little bit, but uh, actually not. We just reorganized the software, uh, the, the structure of the software in a clever way in which if you want to go, uh, colorize your point clouds or your mesh, you just go inside the color add-on in which you will find all the tools that you need to do it. And also in mining, all the tools for mining is included in, are included in here. And also Heron add-on for Heron user, which, are, which is uh, our system, portable mobile mapping system, Heron. And everything, all the tools are here. And the last but not least here that allow you to create a customized toolbox in which you can put all the tools that you use for your daily work inside this toolbox. So you just stay in this toolbox and you can use all the tools that you wish to. And another thing is that if you are working in mining application, you only need to stay in this tools box and you use all the tools here. So you don't need to move from, from one tools box to another to find the tools that you need. And it's also very useful for the new user of Reconstructor that you can find your specific tools in specific tools box. And okay, so just a brief introduction of this software interface. Now I will start with the software first to import the data to Reconstructor here. For example, here I already prepare some point cloud which, which are in a LAS format and E57. Just by simply select all the point cloud you drag and drop into the software and this window will appear, say OK, and this result will appear. This result will, have to, will allow you to decide if you want to do the point cloud registration automatically or manually by all the workflow listed here, raw data import, pre-processing or automatic pre-registration. Pre-registration means that the software will automatically move all of your scans close together by target-free without any targets. Or if you have targets inside your scans data, you can also select the target based option here and find a registration. This final step is to optimize the global error of your complete point cloud model to 3D point cloud model. And I just would like to introduce you what are the parameters under these steps by going to more settings. So import first step here, importing raw data. So in this first step, you can decide to subsample your point cloud and you can also decide if you want to put the color information or remove some artifacts. And the next step, pre-processing. The software is very smart that it can automatically recognize which kind of scanner that you used in your acquisition. And with also some preset of parameters here, which is really specified for each kind of scanner. And you can go through and see those parameters and you always have a chance to uh, change the parameter to modify the parameter. And we also have some filter tools here to remove noise or to compute to, to process the data. And after pre-processing, the software will run the pre-registration, this one. So in this step, the software will 
automatically move all those scans close together to go to the next step in final registration with the ITP registration and vendor adjustment to optimize the global euro job complete model. <clears throat> and the software will also allow you to save your customized parameters to use it for the next workflow in the future, in your future worker. And you can upload it and OK for the all the parameters. Say OK and just select what you want the software to do man automatically or manually. Go next and next and click on process. And I already import the data. So just to save our, your time, so I will click on cancel. And that is all about the importation of the data, the, of your scans. So now I would like to go back to the presentation to show you with the first workflow that we can start working from your data. Now we can start working with uh, some specific application. And the first workflow that I want to introduce to you is uh, the building workflow. And in this workflow, you will see there are two new tools which are section from plane and depth grid. In this, and also there are others well known tools like inspection, auto photo, and the ability to export your extracted features directly to AutoCAD. And in the reconstructor from previous version, we are, we are able to import. IFC format, which is V model export directly from Revit into Reconstructor to the inspection of uh, as built and design. And of course, you can also import many other kind of mesh into Reconstructor. So now let me come back to the Reconstructor software. Here we are. And uh, I will start with the first step in the workflow in um, section from plane and go to model go to and here's a scan data which we use our heron portable mobile mapping system to acquire the floor of a building and uh, you go to cat output here cross section tools uh, section from plane just click on this point uh, this here, create, create new to create a new survey and uh, select your reference plane. It can be any kind of plane, a vertical plane or horizontal plane. And if you want to have more than one section, just click on here and decide the spacing between each section. For example, here I will put it 0 0.8 and uh, you can decide how many sections do you want to extract from your 3D model as much as you want? But here now I will extract three sections to save our time. And also in this recipe window here, we have the list of the section in which we can preview the section that we want to extract. And we can move from one to another by this around here. And just click on computer. In this computation process, the software will automatically extract cross section and auto photo of each section and also extract the point cloud slice of each section. And then the result will be listed in project window on the left side here. You can see it's my mouse in this one. And okay, after the computation get done, the software will ask you if you want to export a section directly to AutoCAD or, or do you want to open the section viewer to now better check the result or do you want to go back to the CD view to extract other information? Let's see with the open section viewer. Here we are. And as Georgia had introduced you before, 
you can export this auto photo and then you send to your client and they can use our go blueprint software which which is free so they can do measurement on this auto photo for example here and uh, let me increase the text size so we have better visualization apply and also area okay here okay and we can move from one auto photo to another that we have just generated before next and close and here in the project window go down in the result we will have everything all the result listed here with cross section auto photo and slides a point cloud and just by right click on this one we can export all the result with export auto photos as image only or image and autocad script or export cross section as a single dxf multiple and also shape files and also export section slices as e57 or last last <clears throat> and i already exported and i will close and later at the end of the workflow, I will show you the result in AutoCAD. And now I would like to undo this one and move to another data set that we can, I will show you how we can import the IFC format from into the reconstructor and uh, do the inspection with the software. Here's another data set that we acquired by our Heron portable mobile mapping system. And let me come back to the raw data here. Now I import the IFC format here. Just drag and drop. And the software will ask you which kind of elements from the as designed model that we want to import into Reconstructor to do the inspection. We do like for example if we want to do the structural verification we can uh, import we, we just import only beam and columns columns slabs or if you want also to do the verification check with the doors or with the wall which if they are installed correctly or not you can also import them here and uh, i mean so this one, because I already imported the mesh, so we can save a lot of time. Here's the mesh of the beam model. And thanks to the powerful function in lineup tools that you can align or you can register your point cloud of your existing building with the as desired model from beam automatically with the automatic registration function in reconstructor and here's the result now i will do the inspection very simple by going to measures and inspection just you will see the received window here just drag and drop the required ingredients the point cloud the mesh and you change the value of maximum search distance as you wish. For example, here I will input 0.3 meters and name your inspection. Beam with 30 centimeters inspection. Verification. And here you can change the type of inspection that you want to use. For example, if you want to check the distance of point clouds to the surface of the mesh in perpendicular direction or in a direction to any kind of axis in global coordinate, you can select this one. And in this case, I will choose this complete inspection here and say OK. And just click on play button here to run the inspection process. And after the inspection process get done job point the point cloud as built 
3D Fortuna model will be colorized with uh, a color mapping and all the points which fall in a range of distance will have the same color and will be listed, will be plotted in the expression histogram here, if you can follow my mouse, which is the histogram is on the bottom right of the interface, the working space. Now it's done. Say OK. And uh, waiting for the updating of the histogram. And as you can see here in the PD view, that all the point cloud has been colorized. And please follow my mouse on the bottom right. As you see here, all the point with the light blue will fall in the range of 10 centimeters from 10 centimeters of distance from the points to the beam model. And the point with the light green here, they are represented to all the part of the S -built, mod, S built model that has been installed correctly uh, with the design model of beam. And the red one will have all the distance to the mesh model, the beam model with from 10 centimeters to 20 centimeters here, the world, and the black black point is means that all the point is further than 30 centimeters from the mesh because, because you can see before that in the mesh we don't have in, in the as desired model we don't have the G, we don't have the cars talking here. <clears throat> and you can also export your report in PDF format by simple simple clicking here on the bottom right in my mouse here, bottom right. And that's about the inspection tools of as views as desired. And now I will move to the next step in the workflow to create an auto photo. We go to cap output and create an auto photo here. Okay, and then click on this point to create new and quick selection to select the area that you want to uh, generate an auto photo. And the software will automatically generate an auto camera which fits to your model. And you also can change the parameters of the auto camera here. Okay, now it's good to go. And the preview snap to extract the auto photo. And opening viewer. Okay. Let me change the background color so we can see the model better. Okay, apply and zoom in. So we have an auto photo of our, our inspection before, and thanks to the new tools in the new release of Reconstructor 4.2, that now we can also see the depth of point inside this 2D image by using the depth tool here on the top. So we can pick some individual points and see what are the depth of them. And if you want to see uh, the depth of points in the entire 2D image here, we can use the depth width here, which is also a new tool in the Reconstructor. And you just need to decide what is the spacing of the grid. So for here, five meter. And there are some options for sampling method to put the points and say OK to select the, uh, to pick the depth grid. As you see, you can see here, we have the depth of points from the grid. And so now from the reconstructor 4.2 that you can have both 
quantitative and qualitative view of the result of inspection data. We have uh, color mappings and uh, also we have the value of the depth of points inside the uh, inside this auto photo. And you can export this directly to AutoCAD and the point is that you don't need, you can save a lot of time that you can export this image and with the AutoCAD script, you can import this result directly to AutoCAD and you don't need to scale the image into the global coordinate in AutoCAD because this image is already scaled with the real dimension. So let me close this one. I will show you the result in AutoCAD. And here we are. So this is the cross section of the building in the first step. And get the auto photo of the first data sample with all the dimension area in the real dimension in AutoCAD. And here's the inspection that we have just done before with the depth grid, colors, and the depth value of points. Okay, let me close this one. And uh, let me move back to the presentation. So, uh, okay, sorry. Let me go back to Reconstructor first. So with all the application, uh, all the practical application of buildings, you can find all of them all of the tools that you need inside the basic reconstructor installation. So you don't need any other add-ons like color or mining or heron. Just everything is included in basic installation of reconstructor. And let me come back to the presentation to go to the next workflow. The next workflow is for tunneling. And with this workflow, we, uh, you have your standard data of your tunnel, and you can, in Reconstructor 4.2, you can extract your cross section of your tunnel by the new tools, tunnel cross section. And then from each section, you can calculate the area of the edge section, and you can also calculate the volume of each section with the depth that you will define in uh, the, the, the section, and then you can do the inspection between the excavated tunnel and the as design model of your tunnel, then export it to AutoCAD. So let me go back to Reconstructor again. Here's the eternal, which is also acquired by our Hero Portable Mobile Mapping System. And then going to Mining Tools box. Here's the Tunnel Survey, Tunnel Cross Sessions. We create a new survey here. And the software will allow you to, there are three different options that you can define the alignment of a survey that you want to survey with the, your tunnel. For example, here I will go with the points. And of course, if you already have a polyline or a trajectory of your tunnel, you can select the polyline, which are, you can select them, which are already available in your project window here. And say, okay. And here are the parameters to set your section, for example, the spacing. Here I want to extract a, a, a section from every 30 meters. And you can go here to check if the section, uh, if your point cloud or the tunnel fit with each generated section, increase the point size to have better visualization and go from one to another to check. And just simple, simple click on computer. So the software will run all the computation like before, cross-section, 
auto photo and point cloud slice. So here in the received window on the right, you can decide if uh, you want the section to follow the alignment or you want to have the section will be forced to have vertical section and also decided to extract the point cloud slice or not here. And now let's see again in open section viewer. Okay, here we are. So we can do measurement here. Change the text size. And here's a new tool in the reconstructor that you can calculate the volume. Just import, input the depth value that you want to calculate. For example, here one meter. Okay, and draw the area that you want to calculate the volume. And here we are. And you can export directly to AutoCAD with the image and the AutoCAD script. Close this one. And after having the cross section, we can do the inspection with the toner for as views as design inspection. From this tonal data set, I already I have already isolated a part of the tonal and I have a as design mesh model. Here, here we are. You can see here, this is the mesh with the violet color and the green one is the point cloud of excavated tunnel. Change the color ID here. And now I will do the inspection. Just select the point cloud and the mesh and inspection tool here. Still in the mining tools box so you don't have to move to uh, maybe also measure. We also have inspection here and mining also have inspection here, so you don't have to move to measure to find inspection tools. <clears throat> and uh, okay, the mesh and the point cloud is also ready here, and uh, change the value of max search distance, maybe 0 0.3, and uh, change the name of inspection, tunnel inspection, and select the type of inspection, run, and here we are. As you see here, all the point clouds has a new colorized layer color data. All the yellow points, which is in the range of 10 centimeters from the head design model, and with the dark blue here, they are in the range of 30 centimeters to 20 centimeters from the head design model. And now I would like to show you how is the, the result in uh, AutoCAD. One second, please. Here we are. Here's the tonal cross section and the auto photo of each section with the measurement and the volume. And okay. Just close this one. So with tunnel survey, you can have everything here, tunnel cross-section and inspection. And let me go back to, uh, to the presentation to introduce you with the new workflow, uh, another workflow, sorry. A workflow for mining workflow. So you will see here, there are, Three well known tools which have been added in Reconstructor from years ago, like Crash and Toad and Volume from Plane, Cut and Fill Volume. And there are three new tools which can help you and which can remarkably, remarkably speed up your workflow, for example, the damn points. You can 
generate a mesh from your survey area with just some simple click and contours and quick profile, which are helpful and useful in uh, extracting your profile cross section contours line from your model. Now, I will go back to the reconstructor and show you how amazing they are. Open the mine data. Okay, here we are. So first, uh, first step in the workflow, we can go with the dam poison in mining here. Dam poison. Click on this one. The software will automatically select the model, the point cloud data which we have loaded before, and you will decide the grid spacing. In this model, uh, we, we, the grid spacing it means that the, the spacing between the points that, which will be generated automatically inside the tools and sampling method. Here, I will decide the I will put the spacing of one meter and click on computer. So, what what are the steps running under this dam points that the software will First, automatically generate a after photo, and then it will generate a grid, the a depth grid with a one meter of spacing, and you can decide to have have the result of a auto photo and depth grid here, or if you just want to have the point cloud, or you want to have point list here in them points to Faster to get the, the mesh faster, I will go with the dam uh, the point cloud. So the software will automatically generate a point cloud from the depth grid. Okay, let me name the point cloud dam points. You can find it here, dam points. I will unload the model. Load the model. Load the damp points here, increase the point size to have better visualization, and just right click and mesh. And I will move to an, the next step of this workflow is a quick profile. So let's go with the mesh one here. No, not this one. Sorry. I will start with the contours first. And we have the model here. Click on contour, create new, and then the software automatically generates sections which which are fit to our complete model. And we can this this side the spacing of each section here. For example, I will select forty meters. We have three sections and we can change the starting point, the upper part, maybe 30. Yeah. And we can preview here the list. Okay. And click on compute. Open the section viewer to check the result. And yeah, just one second. Here, this section didn't fit to the model and here we are with this one and also this one and we can export to auto measurement here and export to AutoCAD directly so this one and okay we in the world and about this one and go with quick profile so in these tools you just with a new profile survey and the tools will have, you just need to pick two points in your 3D model to define where is the starting point and where, where is the ending point. The software will and say, okay, the software will automatically generate a plane here, a section here. Let's change it so here with the yellow boundary. You can also increase it to fit it with your model. 
And if you want to have more than one section, check this pointer and decide the spacing between each section. And this, you can decide how many sections as you wish. And check. And click on compute to do the, all the computation. So at the end, you will have also have cross section, auto photo, okay, your yeah. section viewer. Close this one. And here are all the survey that I have performed before are listed here. Quick profile survey, the one we have just done with a cross section, auto photo. And if you want to export this complete survey, just right click on this one, export, export section survey, as like I have introduced you in the previous workflow. And close this one. And now I would like to move to the next step in the workflow with the volume, the volume calculation from plane. So I would like to use another data set of an open pit mine. Here we are. Sorry. Here the mesh of the open pit mine. And to calculate the volume, still in the mining tools box, volume tools box. We have volume from plane and cut and fill volume here. And start with let's start with the volume from plane here. So you just need to drag and drop the mesh here and a plane, a reference plane to calculate the volume. I mean in the water planes, here's the planes. And you if of course if you want to calculate the volume in a specific area, you can put another constraint like a polyline. For example, please follow my mouse. In this area, you can draw a polyline here directly in the constructor. And you will decide which volume you want to calculate, the volume above the plane or the volume below the plane. So now here I will calculate the volume below the plane and say OK. And here we are the result very quick. The result of the volume here is this is a very big area. So the volume is more than 300,000 cubic meter. And say OK to come back to the PD viewer, PD viewer in the software, or you want to extract a PDF report, you can click on here and let's say OK. And I will move to the next tools, the vol cut and fill volumes computation. So here, please take a look on the left in project window. I have two mesh of different scans from the survey area from different time, time one and time two. So I want to calculate the difference in volume of this area. I just tell the software that the mass, the mass DTM2 was acquired at time two, and the mass DTM was acquired at time one. And if I want to put some constraints into this calcula calculation process. I can import either polyline or a plane. For example, here I will put a plane here in the recipe window. And this will take some time. So at the end, we can see the volume and the, the PDF report of the volume calculation. And now to save our time, I will show you directly the how it looked like the PDF report. Here we are. So in the PDF report, we will have the image of the 
the survey area and also the plane, the reference plane and the polyline and the volume calculation of the mesh at time one and the, the side at time one and the volume at time two and the total cut volume and also total fuel volume here. Yeah, let's come back to the software. And so for mining workflow, have all the tools that are included in mining tools box. And you can find everything here. So that's all for the mining workflow. Let me come back to the presentation. And now I will pass the floor to Georgia. Okay, thank you very much too. Really, thanks a lot. I hope that you enjoy as well with us the presentation of the workflow. Um, sorry too, can you give me back the controller so that I can share my screen? Um, okay. Okay, guys, so uh, we are almost finishing our presentation. Just uh, first of all, resuming what is new in this Reconstructor 4.2. Um, it's easy to use, easy to adapt for new users and get more confident uh, the, ex the existing one. It's faster thanks to the smoother workflow. Uh, you have more processing options as to show you, you have a lot uh, of new tools so well organized that can cover several kinds of workflow. And uh, um, you can have um, um, greater help with the, the uh, new toolbar. And then uh, you have new updated toolbox. Uh, so really, Reconstructor can make your workflow much more efficiently. Um, just a few words about uh, how to try out Reconstructor and how is licensed. Um, you can, if you are interested in, you can um, try Reconstructor. You can download the trial of Reconstructor that works for 30 days. You can test all the function and all the features that Two has introduced you before. The only thing is that uh, export are locked. Um, the software is licensed by a, USB, by a USB dongle that is very convenient and useful because you can easily uh, switch uh, the computer when, uh, on which you want to use a reconstructor, just uh, plug the dongle in and out. We also support server license, so multiple network license. And uh, we have, uh, as introduced uh, at the beginning, uh, a special gift for you. So, if uh, you want to experience pretty well a reconstructor, you have the possibility uh, to uh, access uh, to a very special offer on our website. Uh, so, you can rent a three month reconstructor just only paying one month. That is uh, very affordable. So how does it work? You just go on our web store, on our website, and you can select uh, the Reconstructor package. This offer is available for the main Reconstructor package, and uh, you can add it to your chart. Um, and instead of paying the full amount of three months, you can easily get uh, your three month uh, reconstructor rent only paying one month. You have to add the coupon. I really hope that you have uh, wrote, written down the number of the coupon. I'm joking. Uh, don't worry. Uh, you can get it in the webinar that you will receive by the, uh, uh, by, by the record. Um, uh, this offer is valid up to Wednesday 11th March, okay, and the software will be provided by software activation, in this case not uh, USB based. So uh, that's all from our side. Um, we have a few minutes uh, for uh, Q&A. 
Um, so, uh, if you have some question, just type it, uh, remember, in uh, the uh, chat box or in the related question box. Of course, if we won't have time to reply to all your question, um, we will be back to you afterwards. Um, I want to thank you for joining us and uh, we can reply to some of your questions because we have very few minutes. I can ask also for two support because I see that some questions are pretty technical so I prefer that uh, two can reply to you. So um, let me go to the, through the first uh, question. Um, sorry, two, can you join us? so that I can uh, share, okay, okay, I can share also some question for you. Okay, there's uh, the first one, I think I can reply. I saw that in Heron uh, add-on, there's a, a, an orbit button, how does it work? Uh, okay, um, the orbit button is mostly related uh, to Heron user. Heron, as we said before, uh, is our wearable portable mobile mapping system. And uh, thanks to the worldwide partnership that we have with Orbit, uh, Reconstructor has the, abil the ability to um, directly export to Orbit GT. So um, from Reconstructor, you can enter in Orbit GT with uh, Aeron Point Cloud, Trajectory and Panorama Images, both uh, Full HD and 5K because Aeron can work uh, with uh, Panorama uh, with uh, the, with camera in both uh, uh, resolution in continuous in full HD and uh, in 5K one shot. Anyway, if you would like to know more about Aaron, about how does it work, uh, what you can perform, uh, please write us in private and we can provide more details. Um, two, there's a question uh, yeah. I, I ask for your help. Um, can I export from Reconstructor to Recap? Yes, you can. You can always uh, export from uh, reconstruct a project, and uh, you can, as I showed you before, that we can export into many other kind of format. So, is recap is also included, and you can import directly the reconstruct project or raw data like uh, RGP, uh, UP format into reconstruct uh, into recap. So without any problem, that just directly report, export from Reconstructor and go to Recap. Okay, many thanks. Then um, there's another question for you. Uh, how to import a Reconstructor Cloud into Edgewise? It is possible? Yes, of course. You can export directly any 3D model from Reconstructor into Edgewise and uh, work directly in um, Edgewise. Also, the, you can also import directly the Reconstructor project into Edgewise. Okay, there's, there's another question that I think uh, you have already replied, but anyway, it is uh, because you have shown it in the workflow. Um, it is possible to export the inspection map and the overlapping depth grid. Yes, it's possible. It's the it's really, really interesting tools that have been added in the new release of Reconstructor. So at the same time, you, we will have the inspection of color mappings and we also have the quantitative value of all of points inside that the image so you will at the same time we have qualitative and quantitative value of your inspection okay and uh, then i think that we have very the la uh, few seconds for the last question then we will be back with the other uh, afterwards um does reconstructor provide uh, 3d mesh simplification tools Yes, in Reconstructor, you have ability to create mesh, and we have also several methods that you can create mesh from your 3D model, from a point list, and from point, and from point list, and from simplified simplified point cloud. And we are completely totally aware of that there are many other 
third party software that cannot uh, import with uh, import a mesh with a very high density of triangles. So we are already uh, uh, integrate a mesh editor tools inside inside the reconstructor. So you can simply simplify the your mesh, and you can also fill the uh, the holes inside the mesh. Uh, so you can export them and to work in the third party software without any problem. Okay, okay, two, many thanks. Uh, I think that uh, for today's, that, that's all. Uh, me and two would like really to thank to all the attendees for joining us. We hope that uh, this uh, webinar helped you to uh, experience a little bit more of Reconstructor. We hope that uh, you will go uh, through the trial and through this uh, uh, unique printing option if you want to experience the complete uh, reconstructor also exporting data and delivery your data. So once again, thank you very much and uh, keep in touch uh, and we wish uh, to you a very nice day. Hi everybody, bye-bye. Bye-bye, have a nice day.